their evidence of why TikTok is controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. But I will say, and the conversations that I've been involved with, I've actually highlighted publicly available information of which there's a lot. I serve on a bipartisan commission in Congress, and so I get prepped for hearing, congressional hearings regularly. In February of this year, we had a congressional hearing which actually covered the issue of TikTok. In that briefing, you could look at the, a pattern of former TikTok employees who've left the company, who've said that the Chinese-based offices have access to everything on the app. That includes microphone data, that includes geolocation, that includes um, uh, data from your text messages, iPhotos folder. If you look at what the TikTok CEO has said under oath in his testimony last year, he said, TikTok user data is on US-based servers managed by US employees on American soil. He, we know that um, last year, there was evidence after the hearing that showed that the data of TikTok celebrities based in the US was stored in China. And when confronted on it, TikTok said, oh, we consider that to be a different category of data. And then of course, there were all the revelations of former TikTok employees that directly contradicted um, the statements made by the CEO. So I think so, at do, this do, point- Why don't you take one example at, at by name and explain what that person said? There are multiple examples, but I'll just give you the latest one because this happened right before the, the legislation mm -hmm. passed. In April of this year, an employee whose last name is Turner, I believe his, you know, from memory his- Right, this is, is Evan wrong. Turner. Evan Turner. Evan, Evan Turner, mm -hmm. that's right. He said that TikTok required him that he had a dotted line manager in China um, that, which by the way, totally contradicts the whole idea of Project Texas. Um, and that dotted line manager basically told him to send him large spreadsheets filled with data of hundreds of thousands of US-based users to buy dance workers based in Beijing. And that data included names, email addresses, IP addresses, geographic and, demogra and demographic information. Does that sound to you like U.S. servers on U.S. soil protected uh, by um, U.S. individuals? That sounds like he that it, the that the TikTok CEO committed perjury. I've listened to Scott Galloway, for example, who teaches at NYU and talks about TikTok. He's very anti-TikTok, um, as you are. And he said that basically TikTok is an instrument to reach into the gray matter, particularly of young people, in, particularly in the United States, and influence them and propagandize them. You agree? Sure. Do you not think the same of Facebook and many other um, social media apps? We should have that debate. That's a great debate to have. That is a separate debate than the national security issue. Take away, again, I want to be clear on one thing. You work for a huge technology firm, Palantir, which was co-founded by Peter Thiel, who's a major figure in Silicon Valley and on the right. And it's important for us to establish how your company would gain from a forced sale of TikTok. A lot of people might be suspicious about Palantir going to such lengths to drive this lobbying effort against a potential competitor. Is, is Palantir doing this out of the goodness of its heart? Out of a sense David, of, of Palantir is not mission? involved. Pardon? David, Palantir, Palantir is not involved. It's, I have been doing this since 2020. It's, I mean, if, if you say it's important to establish how Palantir would benefit, you're making a claim that I'm not making. And so if you want to make that claim to your point, I would love for you to present evidence and articulate how Palantir would benefit because they wouldn't benefit is the truth. It is completely orthogonal to their business. Who would benefit? Let's, let's say this had to be sold. Who would buy it? Who would benefit? I think the way that the benefits and costs would fall really depends on the terms of the sale. It depends on how much it sells for and to who. So obviously there's a lot of, you know, Steve Mnuchin formed a group to try to buy it. It's a former um, treasury secretary under Donald Trump. Exactly. Um, but look, four years ago when we had, with the last time we had this go around of a force of, you know, discussions around a forced divestiture, um, Oracle was interested. There were even rumors that Walmart would be interested. The reality is TikTok is, a, is an extremely profitable business and a lot of people in the United States would be interested in buying it. And doesn't its, the diminishment, question, doesn't its diminishment 
stand to benefit imitators and rivals? Potentially they say that, but I think that is operating on the assumption that those rivers or imitators would directly gain everything that TikTok has built. And I just don't know that that's necessarily true because the reality is TikTok has gained so much momentum because their algorithm is really good. And so I think in order to get that kind of user traction, you need to have an algorithm that's as good. Jacob, do you see big political consequences among young voters especially about this? They're going to go blame Joe Biden for this, right? Not necessarily. The reality is this was one of the most bipartisan issues of our time. 80% of the House voted for the bill. I mean, I, I can't think of another bill that's gotten this large uh, of a majority. You know, you've called TikTok, quote, the most potent espionage operation that China has ever carried out against the United States. So far as I know, when it was launched, TikTok was a karaoke app. Do you, is there evidence that... <laughs> This was truly an act of intentional espionage, or did it just turn out to be fantastic for the Chinese Communist Party and its intelligence apparatus? Well, I, I, yeah, I still believe that. Um, I think TikTok's reach into the cell phones of 170 million Americans is unprecedented when you think about the influence that that gives a foreign adversary government. And ultimately, that was what, the biggest reason why I have been so passionate about trying to get some sort of legislative, you know, policy resolution to this national security issue. Meta and X, formerly Twitter, also have every ability to steal user data and manipulate their algorithms for all kinds of purposes. Should the government be protecting us from American social media companies more rigorously than they already do? We already have in the U.S. the California privacy law, which was modeled after the European GDPR. It doesn't make sense GDPR to have a patch. GDPR stands for? The, the general uh, data protection rule in Europe. Mm -hmm. And um, it doesn't make sense to have a patchwork of 50 different laws at the state level in the U.S. So the way that tech companies work is they basically create a system that complies with the lowest common denominator California being, you know, a very large state where, where a lot of these companies are based, they apply the California data privacy law federally at the federal level. It's the de facto law of the land. Why not have a federal privacy law that, you know, basically has a federal preemption that has a single privacy rule for all 50 states? I'm, I'm in favor of having that discussion. I just think that's different than the national security issues. What about the First Amendment ramifications here? During the Pentagon Papers situation many years ago, it was decided that you can't cry national security in order to overwhelm the First Amendment prerogative. Um, how does that figure here? It's true that that was an issue that a lot of opponents to the TikTok le legislation raised as a concern. TikTok is not a free speech platform. It is a algorithmically controlled platform. It's not a public square, it is a newspaper. If you look at um, platforms like Instagram or Facebook that are friends-based, so the content you get on Instagram and Facebook is derivative of the people you follow and are friends with on those platforms. On TikTok, it's algorithmic-based. So TikTok decides what content you might be interested or want to see and then pushes that content to you. That means that they effectively have complete editorial control over what they amplify and suppress on the platform. The NCRI, the Network Contagion Research Institute, which is a think tank, has actually published research, statistical research, that shows that TikTok does editorialize in a way that matches China's censorship um, and propaganda laws. That's number one. Number two, we have a long legal uh, precedent uh, and history in this country of taking of restricting com foreign commerce and um, and restricting foreign entities when national security is at stake. We put sanctions on Russian oil companies. We put sanctions on Chinese telecom companies like Huawei. And so it's not actually that 
uncommon for the United States to restrict the foreign ownership of a given company when national security is at stake. How do you think China might retaliate? They could potentially retaliate against a number of our hardware companies. Um, they've already banned a lot of our software companies in China, especially our content platforms like LinkedIn, GitHub, um, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Google, and, and the like. But for economic development and national security reasons, they allow hardware manufacturers, American hardware manufacturers to operate in China, like Tesla, Apple, and so forth. And so they could try to retaliate against them. Um, it will ultimately be very interesting to see how this plays out and if they do uh, resort to some sort of retaliatory measure against, um, against Apple or Tesla. Well, that's my last question. So this bill is passed. ByteDance still owns TikTok. What happens now? I think the, the bill was ultima is ultimately unassailable. I think it's very well thought through. Ultimately, um, if and when that case gets dismissed by the courts, which I think it will, um, they, the clock will, you know, the clock is, has already started ticking for them to start the divestiture. Everyone hopes that they will proceed with a divestiture. Um, but if it runs out without a divestiture, it will be banned. Jacob Helberg, thanks so much. Thank you so much for having me, David. Really enjoyed it.